Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Advent, a time when we wait with expectation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin the Advent season by sharing with one another the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please share the Christ's peace with one another now. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ as the Lord has promised in the days to come. The nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Amen. join us in the call to worship. In every season of life, God is always with us, even when we believe otherwise. In this season of waiting, Jesus reminds us that Bethlehem is the beginning of our discipleship, not the end of the journey. In this season of Advent, anticipation and hope, the Spirit opens our ears to the songs of the angels. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God of Advent, you come near to us, yet we continue to seal our hearts with indifference to a suffering world. Tear open our hearts and make us more compassionate. You approach us with bundles of mercy to kindle our hope. 
but we continue to build our lives with the bricks of bitterness. Tear open our anger so that we might become more forgiving. God, have mercy. Jesus, fill us with your grace. Holy Spirit, shine through our lives. Amen. Even now, God approaches us, mercy transcending anger, hope overcoming despair, life triumphing over death. This is the good news, my friends. This is the good news of great joy to each one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Today is the first day of the new church year. It's the first Sunday of Advent, a time when we celebrate the fact that Jesus was born, that He's coming again, and His presence with us now. And if you listen to the Old Testament lesson, it talks about God, people not seeing God, and people being worried that they can't see God or feel God's presence. But there's also a sense of hope. The prophet Isaiah says, those who wait upon the Lord will have hope. And that's our chrisman for this morning. Our chrisman or ornament is an anchor. And an anchor is a Christian symbol of hope. An anchor anchors us to God's love, to God's presence. Think of a boat in choppy water. And you throw over the anchor and the and the boat is steadied, and it won't capsize. So this Advent, when you think of God in presence in our life, God's presence is a hope that we can anchor our lives to. And even though there's times we feel we can't see God, or we think God cannot see us, God is there, and God will be part of our lives and protect us. So let's put our anchor on the tree. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the hope you give to us. The hope in Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. You guys have a good week. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior.
Please join me in the prayer of, for illumination. Eternal God, through long generations you have prepared a way for the coming of your Son, and by your Spirit you still bring light to illumine our paths. Renew us in faith and hope that we may welcome Christ to rule our thoughts and claim our love as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, to whom be glory always. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is from the, chap book, the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, from the Old Testament. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence, from ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There was no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. And the second reading is from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be guided by your Spirit, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning I want to share with you a story Christopher Davis shared on the website uh, workingpreacher.com. He said, when my son Christopher was a boy, I took him to Toys R Us, and he got detached from me. Christopher, being my first child, my fatherly instincts caused me to panic. Yet because I saw the closed doors, I knew that he hadn't exited the building. I paced down one corridor and up another, around a corridor, around another owl, peeping looking to find him amidst the crowd of people in the Christmas rush. But I could not find my son. I found a security guard and asked him, do you have surveillance in the store? He said, yes. Then I asked, do you have a monitor? Yes. Can I look at the monitor? Yes. Can you scan the floor? Yes. 
And the guard began to scan up and down the aisles, and there I saw my son surrounded by toys, yet crying. He was clearly in a state of panic. My son was all by himself among people he did not know. My son was feeling lost and alone, and I did not know what to do. I asked the guard, do you have an intercom? He said, yes. I said, keep the camera on him. Then I got the intercom and said, Christopher. My son looked around because he recognized my voice. I continued, stay where you are. He started looking around. It's daddy, I said. Don't move. I see you, although you can't see me. Stay where you are. I'm coming. Christopher Davis tells this story to make the point that when you think God cannot see you or you cannot see God, always remember that God can see you. The invisible hand of God is active and looking after your life. In Isaiah 64, the children of Israel felt separated from God. They cried out for help from someone they could not see, nor could they be sure that they were seen by God. They were strangers in a strange land. For generations they had been in exile in Babylon, longing for the homeland that most of them knew only from the stories of their grandparents. No longer was there a temple where they could come and worship God. No longer were they sure of God's presence. And the prophet Isaiah cries out to God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles the brushwood and fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries. When you did those awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains quaked. Isaiah calls upon the God who brought the people out of Egypt. He calls upon the God that forced Pharaoh to let Israel go. He calls upon the God who parted the Red Sea. He calls upon the God who led, fed their ancestors in the wilderness. He calls upon the God who flattened the walls of Jericho to do it again, to tear open the heavens and make it right. Yet there's this little caveat in Isaiah that wasn't in those other examples of divine intervention. The prophet says, From ages past no one has heard, no ear perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. In other words, God works on behalf of those who wait. Over and over again in the Hebrew Bible, God's people are admonished to wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me and heard my cry. The season of Advent is a time when the church is called to wait and prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Advent is a time when the Christ child is is born into our world and into our hearts, ushering in a sense of new hope and new birth. During Advent, words of assurance abound and the promises that God will come again. Yet the waiting is hard especially this year. All around us we see friends, families, and neighbors struggling to detect some glimmer of hope in times of confusion, uncertainty, pain, and darkness. Health workers exhausted, overburdened, working with short supplies wait for a time when this virus is under control. Family members wait for a time when they can gather together once again and embrace Millions of people wait for a time when they no longer depend on unemployment but are getting up every day going to work. Some wait for a time when they can gather to remember, mourn, and celebrate the life of the one they have lost this year. 
Parents and children and teachers wait for that time when children can gather together in a classroom with no worries. We wait together, together again to share, to sing God's praises and to share Christ's peace with one another, to share communion around the table and to share a cup of coffee at fellowship time. We wait for a little bit of health, wholeness, and healing for ourselves and those we love. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. Fix it now. The disconnect between what we sometimes experience and what we pray for, that results in, from God's apparent silence is a source of understandable anxiety and frustration. Praying to God for mighty acts of deliverance is an entirely human and genuinely Christian response to the pain and suffering of our world, our neighbors, and ourselves. I intend to never stop praying for God's miraculous intervention, but the season of Advent that we enter today adds an important qualification. God is not a cosmic concierge. We tend to think that every problem has a solution and that every question has an answer. Sometimes we just must wait. At Advent, we practice waiting. Even though the merchants are displaying their Christmas merchandise and the Hallmark Channel has been playing Christmas music for over a month now, Christmas is still a long way off. The winter solstice will bring us the longest night and the shortest day of the year. The leaves have fallen and the grass will fade to brown and then be covered in white. So we enter a season of waiting and God writes as Isaiah, acts on behalf of those who wait for him. And Paul echoes Isaiah, commending the Corinthians for eagerly waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Patient waiting is not an excuse to avoid helping those whom we can encourage. But there will always be plenty of unresolved heartaches on this side of heaven that require us to cultivate endurance, confidence, and hope through waiting. Philip Brooks describes the discipline of waiting in his classic Advent hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear its coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, Still, the dear Christ enters in. Many first century Jews long for a powerful leader to overthrow the oppressive Romans. And they prayed and waited. And God did answer their prayer, but in a manner that was easy to miss. Instead of armies of angels, he sent a baby, born in an obscure town in a manger. At Advent, we reenact their watching and waiting, their praying and their longings, alert to the fact that God's invisible hand is active and looking out for our lives. Amen. Let us bow together for a word of prayer. Listening God, we thank you that you are God with us that we can glimpse your kingdom around us and that we can see signs of you in our world, that we can be a part of your story. God, we wait and listen. We hope for what is not seen. Shine the light of your kingdom into the darkness of this world. Will you come into the darkness of today's world to the places where you once walked among us, but now are places of despair, conflict, and occupation. Help us to be a voice of peace, to speak out against oppression, to share the real Bethlehem with others this Advent. 
bring your wisdom to a situation which seems to have no end. We wait and we listen. We hope for what is not seen. Shine your light of your kingdom into the darkness of our world. Will you come into the darkness of our community? To people living with fear and worry. To the people whose advent is not full of joy. To the people needing support. Open our eyes to the situations all around us that we do not see. And open our minds to the ways that we can respond. God, we wait and we listen. We hope for what is not seen. Shine the light of your kingdom into the darkness of our world. Will you come into the darkness of our lives, to our human doubts and failings, to the times we do not live out our faith, to the situations that, the situations that we have not used our power to change. Help us to be as open as you were to us. When you were as vulnerable as a baby, trusting the world for your safety, show us glimpses of your kingdom. Help us hear your story. Reveal to us our part in your Advent hope. O oh God, we wait and we listen. We hope for what is not seen. Shine the light of your kingdom into the darkness of our world. All this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. It is my privilege to tell you about the work this church is doing through the Village Links Committee. Village Links has been a mission project of the Presbyterian Church in Geneva for the past 14 years. It had its beginning when Karen Pearson was teaching at Geneva High School. She was assigned to teach in an alternative program where she guided students through the coursework needed to pass the GED, or the high school equivalency exam. As she interacted with the students, she became more and more concerned about them. She could see that they were doing the coursework during the day and going home to dire situations. One student in particular gained Karen's attention in 2005. This young woman had grown up in numerous foster care situations. She was pregnant, and when the time came for the baby to be born, she literally had no one to go to the hospital with her and no place to live. Karen became a supportive presence in Amela's life. Some of us may even remember the day that Amela came to the Presbyterian Church with her baby in her arms to thank everyone for the care and concern that was shown to her through Karen. About the same time, a church member passed away rather unexpectedly. Mary Link left a very sizable donation to the church in her will. She specified that the money should be used for mission. In 2005, Bob Poole guided the mission committee through a process to decide what the priorities should be for the use of this gift. The decision was made to support two projects one that met the needs of the members of the congregation, and the other would respond to the needs of the community. It was clear to many that the church needed a parish nurse program to help members with the health challenges they were facing. Bob also encouraged us to think about expanding a program to serve the needs of the at-risk teen moms in the community. The Teen Moms Program was started. The Teen Moms Program, also known as Project Promise, has grown and changed over the years. It is currently being operated by Family Counseling Services of the Finger Lakes. 
Karen was one of the driving forces in the program, and she continues to be a strong advocate for the young women. The Village Links Committee and members of the Presbyterian Church have been a constant source of help and hope for the moms and their children through the years. We have provided food, money for medication, shoes for children who were starting school, blankets and warm coats, diapers, gift cards, and numerous other things. In addition to the generous responses to help young families in crisis, we empowered young women by paying for driving lessons, assisting with fees to take a course or an entrance exam, providing references for a job or in an apartment, assistance getting a car, providing critical financial support, among other things. Consistently, what turned out to be the most important support was the encouragement, a caring person to listen, someone to help problem solve when the next roadblock presented itself. This past spring, the coronavirus presented even more challenges to families already struggling to survive. Our church members continued to respond by providing thermometers, gift cards, food, books, and toys. We connected families with the Boys and Girls Club to ensure a continuous supply of food. One of the joys of the work of this church and the Village Links Committee is the ability to witness the strength and determination we have seen. After a multitude of setbacks, we can celebrate some of the remarkable achievements. Let me tell you about a few. Asia has her driver's license. She was recently hired to work part-time in the Teen Moms program that she was a part of. She is now a member of the School Readiness Action Team. Taylor has become a licensed practical nurse. Brittany has completed two years at FLCC and is working for community health. And the last person I need to mention is Amela. On August 15th, she received her pin and her diploma for completing the LPN course. She has passed her exam and has a job. When we stopped by to drop off some pictures, she said, when I get my RN, I'm going to have a real graduation. These young women have become an extended part of our congregation. They're deeply grateful to know that they have a village of support surrounding them. It is clear to see that the only way to improve outcomes for children is to give parents the support they need to achieve their goals. It is difficult for many of us to imagine the huge obstacles that these young women have had to overcome. Thank you so much to everyone for the significant ways you continue to impact the lives of many children and their moms.
Go in peace. Live as free people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wait upon the joy of Advent in our lives. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen.